Thank you. Okay, so welcome everybody. Just uh, as a quick note at the beginning, as Mirabel already mentioned, um, please note that the session is being recorded. So please disable your camera if you do not wish to be recorded. And if you have any questions and or comments, please post them in our Zoom chat. So hello again, my name is Christina Penitzdorfer and I'm chief curator here at uh, the Museum der Moderne Salzburg. And I would like to welcome you to the expert talk with Monica Merlin and Sao Yu, which is taking place today as part of a series of expert talks in connection with our exhibition, Stepping Out, Female Identities in Chinese Contemporary Art. The exhibition has been a large scale collaboration with the Lillehammer Art Museum in Norway and E.L. Strand in Copenhagen in Denmark. It presents to an European audience, the richness of artistic practices of women from mainland China through 26 female artists from three generations with the aim of decisively expanding the narrative of contemporary art from China, which has been predominantly male dominated for about 30 years. And this huge exhibition and publication project could not have been realized without all the great artists whose works are presented in our exhibition. And we have received so much support from the Chinese artists, uh, the studios and galleries, and one of them is Sao Yu, who we have here with us today. So a warm welcome to you, Sao Yu. She graduated with a master degree in uh, 2016 from the Department of Sculpture of the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, where she also lives. Her works span a diverse range of media that include video, installation, performance, photography, sculpture, and painting. And she's famous for her incisive and bold artistic language, distinctive cross-disciplinary practice, witty and ironic expression. She has won numerous art awards, both domestically and internationally, the work has been exhibited globally at important, at important museums and institutions. So Yu has been recognized as one of the most influential emerging artists in Asia today, the leading figure of Chinese new generation female artists. However, fundamental to the success of the exhibition publication was also our international advisory board of four female experts who formed uh, the scientific basis of the project. So I am very pleased to welcome Monica Merlin, a member of this advisory board with us today. Monica is assistant professor in the Department of Art History at Virginia Commonwealth University School of the Arts in Qatar. After her um, doctorate from the Department of Art History at the University of Oxford, Monica was awarded a fellowship at uh, the Tate Research Center Asia, where she created an online archive of interviews conducted with Chinese women artists doing important pioneering work here. And I would also like to introduce my colleague Mirabel Schreckelsen, the head of the Museum Education Department, who developed and organized the public program for the exhibition together with me. And Mirabel will lead us through the Q&A after Monica's and Salyus. So that's from me for the moment. I um, wish you a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I believe it's my turn now, right? So um, I'm extremely happy and honored to be here with you today and with our artists tell you as part of the um, expert talk series. And I'm so proud to have been part and be part of the advisory board for the Stepping Out exhibition because it's been um, uh, such a fantastic opportunity uh, to show art of Chinese women artists uh, 
um, uh, outside of PRC with these um, unprecedented, fantastic opportunity uh, for audiences in Europe to, um, to see and understand better the incredible work of artists uh, uh, that are um, well, often um, uh, not as visible as, um, as they should be and they don't get the deserved attention, I think. So I'm, I've been working um, on, um, on Chinese women artists from the historical period to contemporary for um, a quite long time now. So I'm so um, thrilled to see this happening. Um, and uh, I'm really a big thank you to uh, Christina Mirabel and their team, the Museum um, of Modern Art in Salzburg, as well as uh, Neil Holz Olsen and their team in the Lille Harmer uh, Kunst Museum. So today, um, Tayu and I have prepared a conversation that uh, will stem from an understanding of her work. So we'll particularly focus on uh, Tayu's work and practice. But we'll use this as an excuse to depart um, from her individual work and think about wider notions, ideas, concepts that are important to understand uh, uh, contemporary art in the People's Republic of China, uh, but also the role of women artists. That, um, and that is that is going to be our main um, our main objective for today. So. Um, uh, we would like to start by focusing on the two artworks um, that um, uh, are included in the Stepping Out exhibition, um, the two artworks by Cao Yu, uh, two video works uh, that are, um, uh, that are uh, titled uh, Fountain that was made in 2015 and ha I have um, a video made in 2017. Um, as these two works uh, encapsulate some of the very core issues and ideas uh, that um, um, are recurrent at a core of Tsaoyu's work, but they also help us to um, bring that discourse over to a wider understanding of um, uh, particularly of gender, culture, and society. Uh, so I'm just going to share the screen now. Um, and um, I'm going to ask tell you to um, uh, to please explain how these two works. Um, this is the, the, the first one that um, we are going to see, Phantom made in 2015, how this work and uh, the following work I, ha I have um, came um, in, uh, into your practice. And um, um, yeah, just the, if you can explain to us how these two works came about. Yes, hello everyone that I'm very happy today to talk with you. And I am delighted to be gathered with you. And uh, before today's talk that I'd like to share a small episode briefly, just a few hours before our conversation began, uh, on one of my social media, I received a serious warning and my account was nearly banned. The reason is that the poster of our talk I have posted today is the image on it is part of my work, Fountain. And in the notification, this says that my post contains pornography. On the other hand, in the uh, comment section of the post within a short period of my of uh, one hour, I received hundreds of comments and even viewers fighted and argued with each other in the comment section. Some people, they use a um, uh, dirty language to criticize the image. They said it's erotic. And well, the others who like my work that they try to define. So anyway, this is a, a battle between different people's perception and values uh, of their ceilings, I think. So, OK, um, I talk this because uh, this thing is quite interesting and it's also related uh, to the work we will talking about, the fountain. Um, I have defined two important points from 
Monica's question. One is around gender and the other is people's exception and stereotypes. So I'd like to discuss the first, uh, first uh, work, Fountain. Yes, for me, for me, uh, this is a master do artwork because at the end of 2014, my son was born and I became a mother for the first time. So something uh, marvelous happened to my body. I started to lactate continuously. In this special period that um, I always had a high fever, when I lie flat and forcefully squeeze the both of my breasts towards to the sky, that the pure white milk shooted out like a fountain. In, uh, in an instant light blurred the skin uh, particles, the white milk is clearly visible. Um, uh, the milk that spread recklessly into the sky by great tension and then splashed into my eyes at the speed of free fall. So just as a white cloud that blurring my eyes. So in this bitter struggle, I knew that it was a combination combination of being moved by this great power and the pain from the from my body. I realized that my body at this moment was filled with a big energy. So here I think that my, mod my body has naturally become a fountain, become a monument. So I realized that this power of, of human body is more real than any fountain in European square. So I think it is uh, come from the inherent mas masculinity of women. So at that time I had a very strong desire to express out these feelings. So, um, um, how to say, uh, after 11 minutes, the full breast gradually dried up outside of the beautiful image followed by a sorrow of life. Yes, so this is the process of the work fountain. And uh, yeah, so uh, and could we change to another picture? Yes, this work, yes, is another, a piece of work that have been shown in our exhibition now. The title is I Have. When I, when I did this work, I feel that few people that they, few people will phrase and show of themselves endlessly in front of others in our daily life. So in this work, I use a face bigger than the original appeared in a very huge screen and without uh, elegance of the traditional women, uh, the artist is me. Yes, I am trying to state in my confidence and my pride uh, with 40 sentences starting from the term I have. The 40 statements are uh, advocated by the mainstream values and the socialized ideologies. Uh, all of them uh, were, um, uh, and uh, these sentences have been one by one by the, by the order of of the, of the timeline that I growing up. So such as, for example, um, I have two sons, which is advocated in Chinese tradition. For example, I have a, I have a hourglass waist that people always love it. Oh, I'm, I will be one of the most uh, representative artists in, the, in China or something. So what is dream like I have? Having the so-called everything in the world as for I have happiness or not, who cares? So the sharp voice of this is work has uh, occupied in the whole room of the space. Uh, and whenever people went that the sound will surrounding, surrounding them and go in, into their mind. So I think in this work, someone will feel jealous, jealousy and uh, or maybe someone will feel uh, appreciate of the human, uh, of the female's courage. Or oh, I think at the meanwhile that uh, for visitors who are truly wealthy and rich or successful, maybe they could consider this as an announcement for poverty or, 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 or cowardice. So I think in this work, I'm just uh, um, place a puppet confined in the uh, uh, crowd ideologists and the common values. Shall we watch um, uh, a little extract from the video? So you, is that okay? Yes, okay, maybe certain, certain 
30 mm -hmm. seconds.我有令人羡慕的曼妙身材我有水蛇腰还有大长腿我有一个爱我把我宠上天的老公我有两个儿子他们都有北京户口我在北京及周边有五套房产我的作品有很高的学术地位。Okay, okay. thank you so much, Saoyu, for introducing your um, your works. I think, you know, as I said at the beginning, these two works seem to really bring to the fore um, some of the important concepts that then you um, you visit and continue to work on in some of your other works as well, and in a variety of um, of mediums. Um, going back to um, going back to uh, Fountain, you know, you you talked about how motherhood um, brought you to um, uh, to uh, have to think about the energy and the power that uh, the changes in your body um, had uh, um, uh, had produced a, a massive type of effect, right? So. Could you tell us a bit more about um, how you feel these um, expectations for women in society, uh, whether in China or beyond, are affecting the way in which we perceive our body, right? The way in which we uh, we think of um, uh, of changes, uh, for instance, as in uh, uh, during a, a very important moment such as that of pregnancy. And, um, and maternity. Um, uh, could you tell us a bit more about uh, these, um, uh, you know, changing your body and how you think that is related and how your work, which is quite controversial, right? Because it, it gives a very different uh, um, view and perspective on motherhood. You know, we often um, rely upon images that are very much more romanticized, let's say, of um, uh, the relationship of a woman with her own body um, in the moment in which, um, uh, you know, pregnancy arise or um, uh, or the delivery of a baby or, um, or, or motherhood itself, you know, often we have these um, uh, very sugar-coated um, uh, images of what it means to be a mother. Uh, and instead here is your uh, liberation of pain, right? You had mastitis um, affecting you um, uh, regularly, um, uh, the pain in your, in your, in your breast, right? During, during lactation as well. So could you tell us a bit more how these works kind of um, respond and uh, fight against uh, some of those uh, gender stereotypes that we are constantly subjected to? Yeah, yeah, thank you for your profound questions. Yeah, I think that uh, in this kind of work that I just uh, think that I am a material, I am a tool for my artwork. And I think that artwork uh, should not just uh, like luxury, give people a good feeling and uh, hang, on, uh, hang on the wall or something. I think it should be a good opportunity to opportunity given people uh, opportunity to rethink or reflection. So I think that all of my nutrition is not come from, uh, come from, I think all of my nutrition of the art is come from the, uh, in, in my life, what I, I see, I think, uh, or I heard, or all the things around me. So, uh, um, so, such as in this work that uh, it studied like from a motherhood, like from body, from love, uh, or maybe people think it's really a uh, 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 specific um, about gender. Uh, but for me, I think um, gender is a part or is a detail of my creativity. I think that if I use only one phrase to talk about my uh, activity, I think maybe it will be being alive. Because um, 
is about I think that gender is um, is the one of the most significant part uh, in my in my uh, in my practice. Uh, and why that I said uh, uh, being alive, because that uh, I think the original intention of my creation was because I have smelled the imperfections, social uh, illness and pain in the depths of life. In today's world that I think the majority's beliefs and cognition are the result of being mani manipulated by a powerful minority. I refuse to trap the by the so-called standards by other people. So that's why I think that I always try to challenge the boundaries of, uh, of the things that may be given us. Maybe it's your innate boundaries, such as your gender, such as your nationality, such as your identity or everything. Uh, about this work that is uh, because I'm a mother at that time. Um, also, it's a very important work of my art career, but I think it's a start point. It is a very important point, but it's not all. So um, if I think there's a mother love from this piece, after I think maybe 10 years uh, in my art career, that this kind of love have, has transferred uh, to several points, maybe from mother love to babies, uh, mother love to sons and transfer to my art. Then I think transfer to some kind of mission as an artist for this world, I think. And, and when it comes to um, the I have video, right? Because that, of course, it really touches upon the idea of societal pressure that we, you know, regardless of gender, um, we um, experience like growing, um, in a, in a very kind of consumerist type of uh, globalized society, right? That idea that we constantly have to display ourselves and show off what we have and and um, and create that persona, right? That um, is always um, is always splendid and and um, and successful. Um, how does that fit within um, the understanding of uh, uh, of youth, for instance, of young people in China? Mm, yeah, young people, which one? Um, with the with the I have video. I'm you know thinking about the the pressure, the societal pressure of. Um, you know, showing your success and showing what you have and showing how you um, you always um, uh, you always shine, right, in your community. Uh, do you think this is a trait and, and a, a feature that is quite evident in in Chinese society today? Uh, yeah, I think it's not also in China. It's uh, maybe it's in Asian places, in Asian countries that people has a traditional value that they think that uh, women that should they should be elegant all the time. They should be soft. Uh, they should be just to have a female's um, appearance or something. So they gave female a lot of stereotypes or expectations. Uh, and I think it's really a big trip, trip for women. Uh, so uh, from this work that I just want to people to rethink that, uh, how could we face these kind of questions? And how could we, uh, how, how could we think that uh, the values or the, the things we have in this world? So um, I, in this work, I just want to, uh, try to challenge uh, the way all the expectations of uh, coming from other peoples. Uh, I think if you really broken something, then you have the opportunity to rebuild something again. So just to give me a chance and also give other audience an opportunity to rethink. I'll, I'll pick on the word challenge that you have just, um, just mentioned to kind of uh, think in a wider um in a wider perspective um as a woman artist uh, um, or as a woman in general uh which do you think are the uh, in your experience or in your views 
the most um, uh, common challenges that women face uh, in the in your field in the art world? Uh, so you mean that uh, a lot of change for women to face? Uh, no, which are the challenges, the challenges uh, that um, you think women uh, particularly face in the art world, in, in your experience? Yeah, for me, uh, it's true because I really don't want to uh, be limited by, by the standards that other people built it. Uh, but I don't think maybe not everyone will think of it, have, will have the same thoughts as me because I think uh, most of the people they really have a very strong inertia that they think uh, you should do that, you shouldn't do that. They have very clear boundaries about what you could do and you can't do. But um, I just want to uh, rethink by myself, not told by others. So um, I think this kind of challenge in my work is um, all comes from the country or comes from the traditions. I think it could be a nutrition that you can use or transform it uh, in your art. Thank you. Have um, I answered your question? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> And uh, you know, the, I'm sure we have we have more opportunities to continue to um, to talk about you know which are the challenges for women artists. That um, 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 one thing that uh, you know comes to mind as well by thinking about these two works are connections with ideas of um, of identity and cultural belonging. Um, and, and these are two aspects that are very important to uh, your work. Um, there are many elements that are related uh, to um, Chinese language, Chinese traditions and history. Um, uh, however, there's also a very strong um, uh, kind of cultural dimension, a dimension that goes beyond uh, you know, the national boundaries and really speaks to a much wider and global audience. But um, I wonder if you could tell us more about uh, the role of Chineseness and the, the, the role that, that Chinese or national identity that you feel um, has in your work and how this is on the other side kind of stretched uh, to issues that are global and are transcultural. Uh, yes, I think uh, actually I'm not focused on Chinese on purpose, but it is really like a natural thing or a tool just uh, besides me so I can use it uh, very convenient and directly to use. Uh, and I, I use it more like um, from point to, to surface or to from detail to, uh, to the whole thing. So for example, sometimes it seems uh, it seems to be a work with, uh, regional elements, but the inner concept, I think it's for all the people, for all the countries, regions or global. So maybe we can give some examples such as the work, um, for example, Dragon Hat. Yes. Yes, for example, this is a photography work. Uh, the title is Dragon Hat. It comes from the Chinese word for set. Uh, in Chinese, we could literally translate it as water dragon head. So it's Shui Long Tou. So in this piece that people could see um, ambiguous figure, the figure in dragon head is like Hua Mulan. Hua Mulan is a very famous uh, figure in traditional Chinese uh, history who are masculine, just like uh, masculine sons and daughters uh, who are not bounded by their innate gender. The water in, in Dragon Head in this work is like a source of wisdom, inspiration, and a white light that I think that anyone could create without gender distinct. So in my eyes, the water that jumps over the sink uh, has go into the sink, uh, has, won't go into the sink again. It's just like the so-called bad or disobedient, disobedient faucet in people's eyes. It's the source that can form the huge waves and uh, uh, in the future. So the water spreads from this faucet will eventually gather and make waves in the future. 
So uh, for me, it's such a positive work full of energy. And according to this work, I also did uh, another a project work. Uh, for example, this, uh, yeah, this picture uh, is crowding to the last work. It's called Dragon Hat Shanghe Declaration. Um, in this work, people could see that it, uh, I used the photography work Dragon Hat on the uh, tr uh, trident battle flag. And it's an uh, ancient style of battle flag. Uh, is from three kingdoms peer, period uh, of dynasty that uh, I just uh, carried uh, this uh, battle flag on foot through the wilderness of different countries around the world. And this project has begun on March 15, uh, oh, it's my birthday. So I think that, yeah, for example, I shoot this work in China and I found a uh, wild mountain and at last I, try my best climbing on the top of the cliff. Yeah, so I think that both uh, inhabited and uninhabited places are the battlegrounds of my art and life. So it's also a fearless declaration uh, to the world, not only as artist, but also I think as an independent person to this world, a way for the individuals to gain power and pers persuade freedom in the uh, create, why, uh, create all the gaps of the politic or the society. So it's about this work. This video has been shooted in <coughs> the Avenue of Paris. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting, right? Because we're talking about something that connects um, your your local origins, your roots, uh, your uh, cultural belonging to the rest of the world. Like you said, this is not about um, you know, this is not about being Chinese. It's about being you know human beings and being individuals. So what happens when you move? Um, um, the sort of uh, uh, performance from a uh, uh, sort of a Chinese wild landscape to the urban cityscape of Paris. Yes, yeah, so that's why I said a lot of the world is my place to show art because, you know, um, some of my works that is really difficult to be shown here and it, I will always encounter the censorship things and, and at that time, I always think that, I don't think that art, uh, good art sh will always be shown in the museums so or in the galleries or the inner spaces. I think if artists meet some uh, difficulties such as the censorship that you have op no opportunity to show them, then how do you do that? You won't keep your artwork in your studio. You should uh, have good ideas from your pocket. So. So that's why I, I, I carried this flag and go every place. There is wild mountains. There is also very uh, uh, crowded uh, urban cities. Yes. And I think this flag is, uh, is an ancient style flag. It's, it looks like come from the ancient time to now. It's a long time. And it's also metaphor for freedom. Uh, I think that's in why I put this image on this work. I think that people one day try to creative, they could, uh, they should forget or set aside all the boundaries such as the gender in this work, such as the nationality. Also, I'm a Chinese, but I will never think that I'm a Chinese when I do artwork and always forget the uh, identity such as I'm a daughter, I'm a wife or, 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 or mother. If I'm always thinking about this, it will, be, it will give me many limitations so that's why I do these things all over the world in many places, maybe some place full of the viewers, maybe some place there's no one, only myself. Thank you. Um, on the one side, you know, while you, um, you forget your, your, uh, your national belonging and your, um, you know, your, 
your locale, where you're placed, uh, that at the same time has a very important impact on uh, um, on on your life, right? So when we were talking uh, in previous conversation, uh, you said um, you said uh, you know how impactful, of course, the um, um, uh, the COVID nineteen um, um, you know, emergence in China and and spread uh, had affected uh, your life as well as um, you know the life of your community and uh, and society. And you have created um, a series of works that um, respond to this particular very very uh, recent um, uh, an epidemic, right? Um, so could you? I just have a, uh, some images from some other works um, that I'd like you to uh, talk a little bit about um, and in the way in which these works have been done in response to uh, a very, uh, not only localized because this was a global pandemic, right, um, but how you live this moment and how you think this work respond to that particular um, that particular uh, traumatic uh, time uh, for you know China and and the world. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, before talking about this, I just I want to add have one thing about the last piece because that mm -hmm. work is the latest work. And when I do that work in the avenue, and you know everyone will watching at you, they will give you eye gazing all the time. So at that time, if I'm shy, I think that I, I can't do it confidently. So I just told myself, I said, how you, you are just a base for this work. You are just the base for the flag. You are moving base. So I will give my confidence and then I will forget everything just moving. And the amazing thing is, Sometimes I don't know that someone tried to follow, follow, um, following with me for a long time. And I don't know they are following. So I think it's very interesting because also they, they are not quite understand what you are doing, but they, they, they want to follow. They want to think from this work. And some of the viewers, they try to stop me and talk with me. So I think it's an additional surprise for me from art yes and uh let's back to we'll go back to this idea of of the connection with others and with the viewers and the audiences um later um or if you want to talk about it now we we we, we can <laughs> uh, we don't okay. have a yeah yeah okay. Okay. so so yeah if you just want to talk a little bit about how um how you have responded in some of these recent works uh, to the the global uh, COVID pandemic and how that has affected you. Yeah. Okay. So now, um, the, these several pieces. Uh, yes. Uh, for example, we can transfer to a specific work, uh, such as I have worked out the last sparrow that piece, full of the dead sparrows. Um, I think maybe the yes. Uh, because in this work, people will feel it's quite a different style with my other works, because this is old painting is just like uh, from a very old artist hands. Uh, but in this work, I, I use this kind of style on purpose because I just want to keep this style uh, to constant with the event happens uh, at that time. So in this work, I want to take people back into the time uh, 1958. Uh, 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 at that time, the sparrows were listed as one of the four major pests. So in this uh, piece, a piece that people could see that uh, there are people from different ages, different genders, but they are doing one thing, just killing the sparrows. They use different tools. Um, for example, that, like this girl, the miniature little girl who was uh, in right in front of this work, it's just look like a boy that she is aiming at the last sparrow, uh, which is looking down coldly all this in the world in the upper branch as if 
it seems like la laughing at the stupid, stupid of human beings. So also this work has full of a very happy or festive atmosphere, but there is a danger, sadly, uh, not sadly, it's quietly happened in the left corner because on this tray they're full of pests. Um, so after that, it will, it will be the pest infestation. So in this work, I just want to present that ideology try to damage the laws of the nature. So yes, it's just the behavior, behavior of human being. Um, we can, do, do you want to say how you what 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 this refers to in particular? Yeah, I just want to try to say that people or ideology try to damage the law of the uh, law of the nature. Yeah, and and the references to uh, a Maoist campaign, right? Is it? Yeah, because uh, for example, in this work that. Uh, it looks like a strong belief that maybe they think a zeroing is the best way to protect the food or people's life from danger. And and how how do you relate this to um, you know the series of works that uh, are in response to the um, uh, to the pandemic, such as uh, uh, this one, for instance, that you seem to have. Indeed. Yeah, because that uh, that uh, that event is happened in 1958. Uh, it's about 60 years now, so it's a it's a round circle, right? Uh, but I think on now it's just like a same copy with the things 60 years ago. So people trying to do the same things. They think that they measured uh, the values, the ideologies could damage the the the. The, the laws of nature, they, they think they could control everything. Also the things different, but I think the concept is the same. And so we, ha we have seen that you have worked with uh, such a large variety of materials and, and mediums, right? We started with, uh, with video, you, you actually hold uh, um, a degree in sculpture. So from installation to video to now also paintings, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, uh, uh, um, you know, the versatility that you have uh, um, amongst all the diff these different mediums, and um, how how do you choose what to work with, oh. right? Um, how how do you go from uh, um, uh, from choosing whether that's going to be a performance to that's going to be a painting? Um, if you could talk a little bit about that sort of um, um, intermediality that you have? Yeah, good question. Uh, for example, about these pieces, when the, uh, when the first time people saw them, they think, oh, so you also have painting works. But actually for me, I don't think they're paintings. I just think they are concept uh, tool. Uh, the, I think painting is just the same as my photography, as video, as installation, the same. Um, I'm not think I'm a painter because I don't, I'm not interested in researching on the painting language or something. I just uh, focus on the concept or the issues in our society or in, in our world. Um, and I think that to be artist, you should have a box that I, I told myself, I have a box that in the box, you have different kinds of tools could solve different problems, uh, such as in this uh, piece, or oh, the last piece, the last spiral. Uh, I think the painting is the best way to convey that concept. If I use a, a photography that is just like I'm making a fake um, scene or fake reality. So also like this one, I did not. I did nothing. It's a, a ready-made thing because it's our identity card. It's made by country and designed by country, right? But I just made it and make it bigger. And uh, the, the title is self-portrait because I think artists always like to join self-portrait, but I do nothing. I just made the handmade thing bigger. And in this work is full of details such as my name, my gender, and my, my birthday and my portrait, everything. Yes. 
And this one is really lacks from the Hong Kong Avenue. But actually, I think uh, back to the concept is also to the global issues. I think from this word, uh, such as the sentence, I just don't want you to live better than I do. It comes from a darkness from human beings in, inside. I think it's really dark, but I just put it out, out and just like I shot it loudly. And now you could see the darkness thing have been sunshine all the time, change the colors. Uh, it's just like a surprise of the art. And uh, I think it could be from people to people. It also could be from countries to countries the same. It's a human nature. And um, uh, earlier we um, we touched upon uh, this idea of like challenging and or creating, let's say, creating a relationship uh, with um, uh, with the audiences, with people that um, that encounter your work. Um, and so, as I'm mindful of time as well. Um, uh, I just uh, would like to um, you to talk a little bit about uh, how you see your work challenging audiences and uh, interacting uh, with audiences and uh, uh, what role does that play in your um, creativity or in your uh, making process? Yeah, I just want to give an example. For example, um, we have a cup, and uh, um, if uh, there are may, may, may be juice or some liquid in the in the cup, but if you want to get a new kind of liquid or water, then you will drop down the old, then you will get the new one. So, I think what I'm doing is just the broken the old things, such as the inertia in people's values. For example, I have other works uh, such as the uh, perplexing romance. Yes, um, yes, such as this one, uh, because this work is not looks like a formal work. I just uh, uh, hidden some some wiselings behind of the handle of the door, and people don't know it. After they try to uh, go into the, uh, the space. They will touch four of their hands. They are angry. They are frustrated. But people will uh, at that time people will never think about uh, wrestling is a very good material for our bodies for the uh, for for the uh, uh, makeup things or something. They just uh, angry. But at the same time, they don't know they have participated in the activities of the artworks. They have been the part or the elements of this work because after they uh, try to use my sign nature to clean their hands, they will drop the my sign nature as a rubbish. But you know that everything people they uh, they uh, they think that artist uh, sign nature is valuable, but now it could be a rubbish. Then um, I think in this work is really a positive way, and and the viewers have been uh, put in your work. Uh, by myself, not controlled by themselves. So now they are full of questions, even they haven't seen the works in the space. So uh, another po uh, interesting point is someone saying, even uh, use the tissues to, uh, to clean their hands is not enough. They will go to the uh, toilet or the, uh, yeah, try to use the water to, uh, to clean. So I just a hand, uh, I just made a, sound or uh, audio installation behind of the mirror but people don't know it so you know that the toilet is uh, the best or is the secret place for people to keep their secret but at the same time people lost their secret from this kind of secret place so after they are trying to wash their hands they will sound a uh, strange sound because that sound is a mixed sound is combined uh, with people they such as the kissing they making love they 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 fighting so the the sound is come from our bodies so after they uh, try to go out 
And you know that people are waiting in the queue, try to go into this work. They will ask what happened in it. And they will say, oh, just feel by yourself. So people will full of questions right now. So they will take their questions and try to get the answers from all of my space. So now that you have successfully uh, tried to grab people's mind, you can control them. Now they could decide they don't want to see the artwork, they can go, but now everyone wants to have a look. Thank you. And I, I think the challenge also in some of your works comes, um, uh, you know, not only with the content as we saw, for instance, with Banton, but also and the process as you have just described now, but also with some of the materials that you use, uh, you, some, you have used hair, your own hair quite regularly in your work. You have used uh, uh, um, organ, animal organs. Um, you have used uh, your, your son's umbilical cord um, in one of your work, right? And, and I think all these um, works really talk um, very strongly about uh, uh, the how the artwork becomes imbued with your own body, right? Or with parts of your own body, for instance, um, your umbilical cord or your hair. Could you talk a little bit more uh, about this work, for instance, the one with the umbilical cord and that? Because uh, I think, again, it, it does challenge some of the expectations from the viewers, right? Of what they're looking at and what they expect to see when they encounter a work of art. Yeah, um, in this work that uh, uh, I studied this work from 2014, that uh, that's the first time I gave, gave, gave birth of my first son. Uh, but this work has been finished in two, 2020. Um, the thing happens in these seven or six years it's just I'm always try to find the best, the best material of this work. The material in my mind is a fossil, that, but that fossil couldn't be the tree fossil. It couldn't be the dog's fossil. It could be from a specific fossil. So after that, it comes from a, a mammals, 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 uh, just like um, uh, uh, dinosaurs density. Yes, so uh, this bone is very long. It's 1.2 meter. It's very long fossil, but uh, every people will know uh, fossil is, um, has a long life. It's a, it's a thing, uh, uh, metaphor that, that's. But now I just put, the, uh, put uh, the umbilical cord into it because umbilical cord is the new life. So now that the new life and the down, uh, long dies have been together with each other to be a same body. And why I make it as a ring? Because I think ring, it's re, uh, just like reincarnation. It has no end. It also has no start. So uh, you can also see it's a, a fresh umbilical cord with red blood in it, but it's stopped into this work. It's just like a time stop now. It's so quiet, so beautiful. But um, at the same time, uh, I think it's a very side work. People will always try to celebrate when they gave birth. They think that it's a new life come to the world. But at the same time, I think I have totally separated with my son. So maybe after 50 or 100 years that people will try to touch this uh, still fresh work that I have been died at that time. So. So the title is nothing in, could ensure that we will meet again. Well, on, on this note of legacy and um, making, making your own print, right, in history, um, I just want to um, uh, think about your position as, a, as an artist today, right? You have uh, been, uh, you have, received uh, awards you have um uh, you have established uh, uh, yourself uh, uh, within uh, uh, within the art scene not only in the PRC but also beyond and i wonder um as we 
come to a conclusion. Um, if you can um, uh, give some advice, uh, perhaps to those um, who aspire to become an artist uh, um, and uh, want to pursue an artistic career, what do you think is the most important uh, valuable thought that you could give them? Okay. So also we have talked a lot, a very profound, a very interesting today. But if you tell me to give some advice, I think the only advice is try to forget everything today we talked and try to forget everything pe other people tell, tell you because it will you just as a new paper, just as an empty cup that could full of different uh, possibilities. Uh, will no limitations. When um, in previous conversations, as so well, we talked about being brave and and feeling free, right? And I wonder if you want to touch upon these two ideas uh, now once again. Uh, yeah, maybe if we still have some time, maybe we can continue to browse uh, some other new pictures. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, ju I just, um, that's, that's probably fine. I, I, I just want to, because you said something really beautiful in some of our previous conversation that uh, I'm not, you know, sometimes things come out, you can't replicate them, right? Um, but you said something really beautiful about, um, uh, you know, that it, it links up with what you just said, you know, just forget everything. Uh, but you 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 uh, you talked about you know being being brave, being courageous, being yourself, and and just like really stick to it despite all the rest. Oh, um, yeah, I see. that's what you that's <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's what we talked about. But don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure that um, some other questions, perhaps from the from the audience, might trigger some of these um, some of these ideas again. So. Thank you so much. So you, um, I, I hope everyone could um, see the uh, sort of like uh, the breadth um, of the uh, concepts and notions that um, how you um, tackles in her work and practice, and we can see how if we take Sayu as as um, uh, uh, as a departure point, as a starting point to think about the role. Uh, of women artists uh, who have often been marginalized uh, from the main art historical narratives from the PRC and, and beyond. We can see how their work is really crucial to understand the complexity um, of, uh, uh, of any cultures and historical peers as they use their work to interpret, comment, challenge, normative behaviors, expectations for women within family and society. Um, but moreover, if we move beyond this idea of gender and we try to embrace uh, an intersectional, wider understanding uh, of art, then we can also see how Sayu's work can contribute uh, to go beyond gender per se and really think about how creativity um, uh, uh, within their work uh, raises provocations of new questions and uh, uh, propose, um, propose uh, new, sometimes uncomfortable and unexpected answers um, uh, to a world in constant change. Uh, so I hope we will receive some questions from the audience. Um, Sayu and I are very eager to uh, interact with anyone who would like to ask us a question. So there's the possibility to just write in the chat or just raise your voice and ask a question. Thank you very much, Monica and Sayu for this interesting talk. I have a few questions myself, but I uh, would like to, to give the first questions to the audience. Maybe I just uh, will let you think a little longer. And I was wondering, actually, maybe Monica and also Sayu, you can answer this because 
Um, you're a very young artist, and I just mentioned this, um, your age, because in the exhibition we have different ages of artists. So we have three generations, and you're more of the younger ones. You were born in 1988. And I was wondering, because in your talk, um, in your answers, you were, it sounded so powerful and it, it looks so powerful and looks like you, you can work very freely. And I was wondering if you are censored in a way, or if you're concerned about censorship still, because we know with other artists that this is a real problem or it was a problem, or also with customs or bringing uh, things here and your little anecdote in the beginning, it was like, for me, I put the image on the website. So I was the one I was like, yes, this is how you, of course you can work, but I never thought about the, the repercussions. I never thought about the consequences maybe you could have. So could you talk about your way of, about being so free in your artistic work? Or oh, it seems like it. So it was like this very powerful moment for me, but on the other hand, the ones who are perceiving it, they still have this, yeah, maybe their own, being used to the censorship like um if you could just talk a little bit about, about this yeah i think on this question is very typical then maybe uh, i think many viewers will have the same questions in their mind uh yes about censorship this question i always meet of this question especially in my country so uh to be honest sometimes i'm so sad about it because you have prepared a good artwork, but you have no opportunity. You, they have been banned, they have been censorship. Yes, but after that, um, I have a very uh, clear thought about this. I think also people around you, also uh, in this kind of a uh, place, that there are many boundaries, there are many taboos, because for example, people will tell you, this is taboos you can't touch. That is taboos you also can't touch. So I think if you really listen to other people's uh, things that you can do nothing. So I just think also in my uh, surrounding, also in my environment, I can't give me uh, the full free freedom. But in my in inside, I must give my give me uh, the full freedom to think, because I think that uh, also people talk, uh, I think time has a line. For example, if we put the timeline longer, if we think about after 50 years, after 100 years, at that time, people who told you taboos have died. Uh, I think the maybe the, uh, the, the people who, who control the power also died, that I died, many people died. So at that time, there is no any uh, taboos at all. So, so I think that my artwork is not only for the people in this era, also for the audience maybe in the future, the different eras. Uh, this is uh, the thing. And another thing is about this, uh, just like what you say, is censorship. It's, I think a human world is really not heaven because in heaven, maybe it's so perfect maybe it's no need to do strong artwork because I think maybe heaven is uh, a good artwork itself. But now, no, but no, uh, now here it's human world. Human world will be full of problems, illness and pains and, and uh, um, uh, uh, dramas, many things. So uh, I think uh, they are really need artists or writers who has, have really um, think that they have a mission uh, to change something or maybe they really crazy to think that they have the opportunity to change the world. So I always give this kind of encouragement to myself. And when, they, when I meet the censorship, I think I have several methods. The first thing is the simple way, maybe you take it, go abroad, right? But it's not the basic uh, problem. I think sometimes uh, you should do your artwork just uh, waiting for the best time to show it. And um, uh, so at last, I think that censorship is really not from yourself, it's from others. So I give, my, I, I give myself full of freedom. 
Uh, and uh, I, uh, here, I just want to mention the work. Why I want to mention is uh, that work is different uh, with these works because it's a very long time because that work, uh, the, the, uh, the day I finished that work is the day I died. So uh, that work is called uh, um, Everything is Left Behind. It's just to use my hair. I have very long hair. I will never cut it in my whole life until it, uh, not until. Also, maybe uh, in the future, it will be gray, it will be white, but I will still keep it. Because in this work, I just uh, use my hair and uh, to use the soft hair, just like a very uh, strong knife uh, to make the, to record the people's specific values, interesting things. Uh, in this work. So now I think the soft uh, hair, a single hair, have been really transferred to a very strong uh, dagger in this work. So uh, I use my hair because I think uh, my hair will drop by the time. But uh, about this work, the timeline is also flowing. It's also about time. So I hear it's constant with each other. So this work, I will do it all the time. And after, after uh, I finish, maybe uh, many pieces together, people will see that the color is changed from black, then looks like uh, disappear because with uh, white hair or something, but it looks like a, a artist, uh, that, uh, that, um, uh, uh, artist uh, a novel, but it's not novel, it's just a record for this era, for this time. So, yes. Thank you very much. Um, is there a question from the audience? Otherwise, I would like to go back to Fountain because we have it exhibited here in the exhibition. And um, if you just could go back to, so we have it on the screen. Um, and we have it very big in the exhibition. Um, and when I read the catalog, I wrote about, uh, read about Bruce Nauman and also, for example, Marcel Duchamp, the fountain. So we have like the sculpture part and we have Bruce Nauman, the SSF portrait, the fountain as SSF portrait. Um, so you, do you have references? Do you have at historical four figures or because yeah do you have someone because now we see it with our western gaze maybe we, we project it maybe on the fountain because you were talking about your motherhood and about this powerful and painful moment of 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 yeah releasing the milk in your breasts and um maybe we we have our own western gaze where we think about maybe i thought about ejaculation about maybe something very phallic, very like a phallic symbol more. And I was wondering um, if this is at all a reference to you or if this is just something where we are like try to compare what we know and, and with our Western, not maybe male gaze, but our Western gaze on your works of art. And if this, this is at all relatable to you. Yeah. Um, before answering this question, I, I want to share a very interesting point is uh, you know about this work, this image. Also, it's not an image; it, it's a video work. Uh, but about this screenshot shoot uh, that have been, I I I think I have thought many times people uh, PS this work with the other three fountain works together. They are from Angles Fountain, from Marcel Duchamp, from uh, uh, Bruce Norman's, right? So four uh, images together all the time, but each time if, we, if they try to post it out on the internet, then you will see only my piece have been banned, it's blank. And other three has still there. So it's very interesting. But um, yes, like you, uh, like you said, that it's not only about motherhood, about my body or something. Um, I think in this work, when I doing this work, that the title for me is uh, is quite important because at that time, this uh, this this title go into my mind, 
And I think it's really a perfect name because it's not only about fountain for life, it's also a fountain that could make a, a very important dialogue to the, uh, to the art history. Uh, but one thing is uh, in art history that the classics pieces about fountain has all made by male artists. They are all men. So I think now it is really a new dialogue with them. It's a new, uh, it's a new artist, it's young artist from the new uh, time and it's from women and it's from um, different kinds of uh, uh, materials or, or medias. So I think from this point, it also makes me very excited because I found that this title is really the perfect thing for me. Um, so when I do this work, I really find uh, that's a real feeling because uh, after the milk went out, it will go into my eyes and it hurts because it's from a high distance and dropped into my eyes and I can see nothing. It's just uh, white, everything is white. And at that time, that first time, I think to be a human being that you could have this kind of uh, um, strong power in your body. That's the first time I have this kind of feeling. I, uh, so after that, I found it's a miracle thing about your body. So just uh, how to see your bodies. I think your body is really a very good tool to use to convey everything in, in the world because I can use my breast milk. I can use the, my fingers to touch. I can use my ear to hear. So I think that uh, it's just like God have gave you many tools uh, to, to, to be together as a body and, tr and tell you try to use these things to creative in such a kind of um, mass uh, human world. Oh, and, and uh, one detail is that before I do this work, I try different angles because I try the, uh, the direction towards two fronts and to drop down and I want to line down um, into the sky. So after that, I found this is the perfect way. So that is real fountain, it's monument, others it's phenomenon. So I think in this work also it's a very small, small point but it's, uh, it's just a turning point. It's quite important for me. So you, you already touched upon artistry and that you always put in reference to male artists and um, I was wondering, Monica, you did a lot of interviews with other artists, Chinese female artists, and what are the key elements of rewriting female art history? Because also this exhibition is part of rewriting female art history, Chinese female art history. So um, with all the interviews you did, and you did many, um, and all the um, research and your knowledge, like, what are the, the things that are most importantly that maybe it's that the fountain can stand by itself by a female artist and is not compared to someone else? Like, how can we rewrite it? Because it needs to be rewritten. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a very hard task from the point of view of, um, you know, an art historian or an art critic to um, to empty out that pre-existing knowledge that we have and to, uh, you know, to rewrite history. I mean, uh, there, there's been, of course, in feminist art history, lists of different uh, ways of thinking in which uh, feminist art historians can uh, uh, rethink, right? The, the, the criteria that we use to think about art the criteria that we use to um, think of um, any of the uh, big notions that we have in art history from the idea of the canon to the idea of the genius to the idea of creativity. We have to really undo what we know, which is extremely hard to do. So, I mean, I think initially um, the, 
you know, the mission of feminist artistry was to kind of bring women back into the picture, right? And kind of insert the men. I mean, great feminist art historians, you know, from Linda Nochlin to Griselda Pollock, um, uh, have also tried to move that mission forward and try to completely rethink the, the concepts, notions that we use to think about art history. And that is the very, very, very difficult task. So um, um, I, I think particularly, you know, if we take this idea of the fountain and we take the references that we have discussed, uh, that also come from a, a, a different period of time. You know, we have Duchamp, I think the first uh, fountain was from 1917, um, even though, um, uh, we now discovered that the very idea of the urinal was actually not his own, but was coming from uh, um, um, uh, uh, Baroness uh, uh, von, uh, and I would love to remember the full name, Le Verhingen. So sorry, I'm really bad, but uh, you know what I'm what I'm referring to, right? So uh, it was in fact. Um, uh, Dadaist uh, and uh, extremely eccentric uh, uh, woman artist that was behind the idea of Richard Mott and uh, and the urinal per se. So that is a way in which we are rewriting art history, also based on uh, rethinking documentation that is existing and that has been discarded and overlooked. So there are different ways, right, in which we can rewrite um, by look, looking back at what we have and try to rethink the material that we have available in order to um, uh, propose a different narration. It doesn't have to be entirely different, uh, but it might highlight, as in this case, um, the Duchampian case, I think. Uh, the role of women artists within that world of creativity, you know, in the early 20th century in New York um, or US, um, um, you know, modern art scene. In the in the case of um, of, of Taoyu's work and and the idea of the fountain, you know, the the complexity that the presence of the artist with the body um, and ideas of um, you know um, uh, of, of 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 gender of the gendered body um, uh, completely rethink you know if we think of um, Nauman's or uh, Duchamp has an absent body right we kind of assume that there's a body that will urinate in the urinal at some point, but we don't have the body, right? But um, so if we take Nauman's and uh, and how you work that are probably more have that performative aspect to it. Um, they're so similar and incredibly different uh, because the, um, I think gender definitely plays a role in rethinking uh, the position of the artist, the body, and uh, and the power of creativity that is attached to it, um, and the intention as well, probably right uh, from Nomans uh, to 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 Sayus as well, and there are other fountains. I was talking to Sayu actually about this um, earlier today as well. There are other fountains uh, by other women artists that could be could be a really nice. Um, Paper actually uh, to to be written um, that also want to um, kind of challenge that male uh, you know geniality and and kind of re, uh, reinstate the presence of women as um, as creators. Um, but yeah, it is it is a challenge. It is a challenge. I mean, I have my own project on that, but that's for another day. Yeah. When when you're talking about challenge and uh, from a uh, female's perspective, uh, you know, I have a, a piece, a series of uh, photography work called Film Fatal. Yes, that work, uh, Film Fatal, is several men they are peeing in the public place, not public place but caught by me, by my camera. Do you know that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, in that work, um, people will think I'm trying to catch someone peeing, <laughs> or maybe they think he's, uh, but you know, this is not fountain, right? He's dropped down from my perspective. And uh, the other thing is, I think uh, it's, it's just a very common phenomenon in our life because people always will always see that some guy doing this thing in the secret place. But what I do is not just want to catch them, I think uh, they have really good uh, uh, relationships and uh, I try to use a way to uh, to uh, uh, make a ironic thing. For example, the first one that you could see, uh, this is the angle is look up. It's different from other pieces. So I think that guy, uh, if we think that he is a rich man or high or upper class, maybe one he, also when he's peeing, he's saying that my peace skill is better than you. And you should look up at me also I'm peeing. So something like that, but on the opposite, I catch, I catch another uh, angle is uh, for example, the third, the third one, uh, because in that time that in Beijing there, <coughs> it is uh, a star state and uh, the sky is not blue anymore. And I think I, uh, after I caught this picture, I'm very happy because at that time that on the top of the building, um, uh, the, um, uh, the title, not the title, uh, there is a small light on the top of the building. So uh, it's the advertisement brand, but uh, from a far distance it's such as a light. It, it looks like, only maybe you could go to the upper class then you can see some light. So, so it's very ironic. So, and this guy, he seems so lost that he's quite different from the first one. And I just afraid them in a very, um, uh, in a very uh, expensive, uh, uh, this kind of classic frame because this kind of frame is always used for the high or upper class person. Uh, for example, the gentlemen, the leaders, or the princes, or something. But now they they have been replaced by the person who is doing this thing. Also, this is very common phenomenon. But when people think it again, it is not common. It's not. It is strange, and they just just facing you in front of you. So, this work is just from a females. Uh, perspective to see man and that gave Femme Fatale a very beautiful title for the month. I like that you're so versatile. I wouldn't have expected that. <laughs> so I think we've seen such a broad variety of your artwork and it's amazing. Um, so thank you so much for showing us and also talking with us, Monica and Sao Yu, um, about all of these artworks. I just looked at the time and I think we could talk so much longer because I'm sure there will be so many more very interesting work work of arts from you. Um, but I just want to be mindful of time and time zones, <laughs> which is in, which is the case here. So uh, thank you very much. I hand over to my colleague Christina for the last words. And I'm sure if you have still some questions or you don't want to answer them, you can write us um, um, or just email us and we will forward them. If there's a question popping up, um, maybe if you, Monica, give me back the host, I can share one last slide for our next events. Um, so just that we have a glimpse um, of what's happening. So, oh, we just... Make me the host. Perfect. Um, and this is just our next event. So as mentioned before, our curator Christina Penitzdorf will have a curator talk in German um, in two weeks. And also our other exhibition 
Um, Marinella Senatore, we raised the Lifting Adders, a female artist from Italy, a performance artist. She will have an artist talk. It's in English. It will be in the museum. And also we have a big parade um, organized by the artist Marinella Senatore on June 24th. So if you happen to be in Salzburg, this is a very nice occasion to go to the streets, um, show your body, show your actions and just be present um, and maybe if you have time, you can look at the exhibition before, so you get a glimpse of what what she's intended, what she intends to do. And yeah, this is just um, a nice heads up. But everything else is on our website. You can um, inform yourself there. And yeah, thank you very much for all of you for attention, Monica and Sayu. It was so interesting to listen to you and Christina. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. There's not much. There's not much yes. left to say. Then, also from my side, thank you so much, Monica and Sao Yu, for your time and your dedication and for these important insights through your conversation. And also thanks to our audience. Thank you for joining us today and uh, for staying with us until the end. We hope to see you again um, online or even physically here at our museum. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you that art make us together. So <laughs> <laughs> have a good night. Good night. Thank you too. Bye. -bye. Bye.